G'day everybody, uh, my name is Spencer V. Chapman and I'm coming to you from Australia. Tonight we're going to read through Genesis chapter 3. Now I hope you had a great day, again it's around about just after 8 o'clock here, 8 p.m. Yeah, I hope you've been watching the videos that I've currently been doing just to give you more insight as to how I do these videos. Tonight it's interesting because it, it takes a bit of a turn, okay? The first two chapters have been absolutely fantastic, a lot of creations going on, Genesis 1 and 2. Everything's perfect, everything's wonderful, absolutely fantastic, you couldn't get it any better. But, okay, tonight it's about to take a change forever. So watch this, watch this space, don't go anywhere, you want to watch it, okay? And you want to listen to it because it's very important. This changes the ball game. It's absolutely going to change. Whatever you're doing, I hope you're well. I hope life is good for you. If it's not, that's okay. I hope these videos are bringing you some joy, peace, distraction. I don't know, but I hope they're okay. I hope you're finding something worthwhile. Again, I'm just a guy. I'm just reading the Bible for you. I like doing it. Uh, I find it really interesting. I hope tonight we can read through it. Oh, if you don't have your own Bible, get yourself one and go through it while I while I while I read it. Get your own. Have a look as I you know follow it as I read it. That's probably a great idea. For those who are just about to click off, you know I'm going to pray. For those who have seen the videos before, I like praying just quickly before and after just to really give this to God. Don't go anywhere, okay? I don't want to put you off. I'm not trying to do this to make a statement or anything. This is really just reading God's word. So just having, we're trying to learn something. I hope you do. Let's pray. Let's get into it. I hope you stick around. Don't forget, just underneath, click the uh, like button and also subscribe. Helps me, helps you. Then you'll never miss anything. Let's let's go, hey? Dear Lord, uh, we thank you for today. We thank you for all of the wonderful things that you've given to us and that we can give thanks in the good and the bad. And that tonight we're gonna learn about Genesis chapter three and it's about to change. Things are about to get a bit crazy. Open our hearts and our minds and our eyes and our ears to understand what this is. Uh, we give you all the glory uh, in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, let's go. Genesis chapter three. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. And you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. I will put an enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. To the woman, he said, 
I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. Uh, with painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground before because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of all the living. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. So that's pretty sad. And that's the end of Genesis chapter 3. So, wow, what a change. What, what, what a change. They've gone from a relationship with God, which they saw everything being created. They named the animals. They were living in the Garden of Eden. Things were perfect, literally perfect, to the point that they were naked and they felt no shame. Woman was made from man. God gave man a job. Things were great. And then the serpent came along and... You know, it, it's, it's interesting. When um, God is talking, he's talking to man, and then woman came along. And that's okay. But from the beginning of chapter 3, where's Adam? Hmm. Where is Adam? The serpent didn't talk to Adam. He didn't use Adam. He went to Eve. Why is that? Why did the serpent choose Eve instead of going to Adam first to try to deceive him? That's, that's, that's a good one. Um, <clears throat> now, the other thing was the man listened to his wife. She told him that eating of the fruit was okay and he didn't question it he just did it you know um so there's many many sad things here that that there's choices that have been made that have affected everything absolutely everything and we still suffer from it today so you know it, it really is the changing point and it's only in the third chapter We've got a long way to go, but this, this right here is the game changer of absolutely everything. Well, hmm, up until a point. And that's not going to come until very much later when we learn about God's Son. Now, I'm just going to briefly mention this, and we can talk about it later. But it took one man to bring sin into the world it's going to take another man to take it out and uh we're going to get to that later um <clears throat> but were were the the things that god caused for the snake the serpent for the woman and for the man the problems that they were going to have in life after this thing has happened was that too much? 
but there's consequences. There's always consequences to actions. And these are the consequences. The consequences was the serpent was going to be hated by man and the woman and the, the children. Um, the, the woman's consequences were that she would have pain in childbearing. And it says here that the husband will rule over her, which wasn't meant to happen. The pain in childbirth wasn't meant to happen. Um, the serpent probably wasn't meant to be that way either. Um, and then the man is cursed as the ground. So from, from this action, the, even the earth, even the garden that was supposed to be, that was perfect, is now cursed. The whole planet is cursed. They're cursed. So you can see that this this one thing has affected absolutely everything. And we'll see, uh, once we go into chapter four, to, uh, Tuesday next week, uh, there's a lot more, a lot more that this one thing just blows everything out of the water, just absolutely changes how we even live life now. So, you know, <clears throat> By, by looking at this, we can go, right, the problems that we have in life today are from that. The problems that we have in life today are from the consequences of what Adam chose to do and what Eve chose to do. And the problems that we face today is because of that. But this is the good thing. God has made a way for us to get back. There's a way back. There's a way back to God, and it's through his son, Jesus Christ. And he was the second man that came to fix the problem, to, to change history, to change our eternity, okay? And the, the consequences of the sin we still face, but there's also consequences of making the right choice, and today is the challenge of whether we, we can make a right choice. Let's make a better choice than Adam and Eve made. And we all have a choice. Jesus died on the cross and he rose again to save us from these consequences, to save us from this thing that happened so long ago that affects us to this very day. And one day all this is going to come to an end. But every day we have a choice. We wake up and we, there's, a, there's a new day. God loves us and he's, he's giving us opportunities all the time to make a choice. But what choice are we going to make? Hmm. I know what choice I'm going to make. I pray you make the right one too. And uh, there is no stress. There is just love with God. The yoke is easy and the burden is light. It's all good. God loves you. Okay? God loves you. God loves me. And doesn't matter what you've done in the past. Doesn't matter what you're doing now. Doesn't matter what you're going to do in the future. God's going to love you. It doesn't mean that there's no consequences. As we found out, there's consequences to our sin. But God still loves you. Okay? So, let's pray. <clears throat> we'll finish up. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you had a great time. It's an interesting one tonight, isn't it? Very interesting. Uh, lo lots of stuff. Lots of stuff we could talk about, but I'm running out of time. So let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Lord, I thank you for Genesis chapter 3. And um, sad to hear that what's happened and uh, the things that have been brought into this world. But we also know that there's something better coming. And we're going to read about that later. Uh, Lord, I just pray that you'll bless the people that are watching this, that you'll give them peace, joy, uh, whatever they're doing, uh, and that they can come to you knowing that they can be saved from these consequences of sin and the consequences of the actions that happened so long ago. So I give you glory in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Uh, amen. So amen. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around. Hope you had a great time. And I hope I haven't gone overboard because uh, I'm running out of time. So stay tuned next week, Genesis chapter four. Be good. Love you. Have a great day. Whatever you're doing. Ciao. Bye.